Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're gonna to be talking about the self-titled debut album from All Vays. Okay, for those of you who have been watching my series for a good year or so now, or those who have gone through my back catalog, who before I had a decent camera or any presence in front of said camera, you might remember that I didn't exactly have a lot of material to cover in the middle of the summer. There's a reason for that. Like early January, the midsummer tends to be a dead zone for album releases under the assumption that the radio has already locked in their songs of the summer and people will have picked up the albums they want to listen to wherever they're going for the beach or the cottage or the backyard barbecue and in a year where the pop charts have been fairly stagnant on that note as it is and just in terms of turnover or populated by singles from albums released last year it leaves album critics like me in a bit of a tight spot it's gotten to the point where the albums battling out for the top spot this week on the charts are from Jason Mraz and Weird Al Yankovic neither of which are acts that you would ever expect to get a number one hit no matter how much one of them might be deserved of it. And since I already covered Weird Al, and you could not pay me to cover Jason Mraz, I figured I might hop back into my backlog of critically acclaimed records that I might have passed over earlier in this year. But the problem with that is that I already covered most of those records too, and the ones that I missed over or passed over have discographies that might require just a little bit more time in talking about them before I feel really comfortable about it. So in sheer desperation, I went to that wretched hive of scum and villainy, otherwise known as Pitchfork, and grabbed the first record that looked somewhat interesting. A debut album from a Canadian band called Always. Based out of Toronto, they're an indie pop quintet that is advertised as pairing millennial social anxiety with breezy, effortlessly cool surf rock. In other words, the perfect act to drop an album in the middle of the summer. So, you know what? I figure, what the hell? I picked up their self-titled debut album and I gave it a couple of listens. Was it worth it? Well, I gotta say, this was actually a definitely an interesting case because the self-titled debut by Alves definitely stands out from the indie rock crowd this year and turned out to be a surprisingly intelligent, dramatic, and genuinely gripping record hidden behind the trappings of effortless cool and ride too clever for their own damn good smiles. In other words, it's a record that on the surface seems to be the sort of indie rock that operates on the double level of being both enjoyable and kind of insufferable, but then viciously subverts that to actually have some surprising depth beneath it into a surprisingly great record. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but there's enough real drama on display on this debut to make it very easy for me to recommend this album and really praise it. So okay, let's start with the instrumentation, which is a bit of an odd fusion, all things considered, between the mid to late 80s jangling indie pop rock of acts like R.E.M. or that recently reissued C86 compilation with the breezy surf rock sound of the early to mid 60s. Think of a 60s inspired pop act like the B-52s with all the polish and flair sanded off for a rougher, richer, earthier sound, but all the easy grooves of the melodic progressions actually preserved and carried over. The guitar tones, they're washed out, but still maintaining a crackling, borderline lo-fi presence that doesn't so much add edge and texture, but to just complement those drums and the occasional drum machines on tracks like all The Ones Who Love You. What I found most impressive about this record was the integration of the keyboard segments on tracks like Dives and Red Planet, which have this rich, burnished balance that really complements the guitars surprisingly well, especially when the guitars go on some of their more offbeat digressions. And for the most part, the production is really solid too. Fuzzy, lo-fi, ne yet never really preventing the melodies from coming through on this expansive, really quite colorful mix. I really dug it. And into this already strong indie rock sound steps Molly Rankin. Yes, of the Rankin family, who brings a lot of bright-eyed cleverness and passion to her vocals that toes the line between first aid kit's shimmering folk edges and Lana Del Rey's 60s-inspired pop diva, albeit with significantly less glamour and flash. And what I love about her delivery is that there's a lot of subtlety. On the surface, she might seem to be your stereotypical, burned-out, bubbly, manic pixie dream girl, but the the trope here is subverted completely when she shows a real darker side, from the hidden edges that drive some of the more unsettling lyrics, to the real vulnerability and despair that she displays when the character she plays gets exactly what she wants. But before I get to that in the lyrics, let's talk about the one big gripe that I do have with this album, the vocal production. Simply put, as much as Rankin's voice draws a lot of attention throughout the mix, the dense instrumentation and echoing production on tracks like The Ones Who Love You and Dives can make her lyrics more than a 
little difficult to pull out and decipher, especially when nobody's posted the lyrics online. Which really is a shame, because the lyrics and themes are definitely the highlight of this record when I can pull them out. The tagline of millennial social anxiety meets breezy, effortlessly cool surf rock is completely apt here when it comes to lyrical subject matter, because it's rare that I've seen an album succeed so well in capturing the contradiction of a disaffected generation trying so earnestly to detach, and yet doesn't really have a clue what it means when it comes to real adulthood. Or, let's put it another way, when Alve's eventually ends up as a soundtrack for HBO's Girls, it would make perfect sense. And this is speaking of a member of that millennial generation in question. The opening track, Adult Diversion, sets the scene and themes right out of the gate. A girl hunting for her version of The One, and frustrated with her inability to connect with the guy that she's just watching on the subway. And it's very telling that in this song, in the follow-up song, Marry Me Archie, that she's waiting for the guy in question to make the move. She doesn't want to put herself out there and actually do it herself, especially when that move doesn't seem to be really be forthcoming. This highlights the three lyrical elements on this record that I really do love. The vast aspirations of Rankin's character, her dreams to soar above her peers that is perfectly framed in order to highlight her own self-obsession, the underlying flightiness and live-for-the-moment passion of the relationships that, in both directions, and her willingness to casually toss them aside, highlighted brilliantly on the casually disregarded death on Next of Kim, and then the altogether very earnest longing for real love. Now, all three of these elements come together very starkly in songs like Party Police and the Agency Group, where Rankin's character sings about that one-night hookup that might be so magical, just reveling in debauchery, and then the aftermath of it, when both people deny their effect and it honestly rings as a little futile because there might be more going beneath the surface there or perhaps not and they just really just don't like each other in the end of it. But this is when Alves takes an unexpected twist. They actually show the consequences. Dives from the lyrics that I was able to parse out from the song seem to show the relationship progress into a slow stagnation punctuated by the very telling line you never get it right on the first time. And suddenly the narrator suddenly gets exactly what she wants as marriage looms on a top of Take. And that self-obsession leaps to the forefront in both her and her spouse as he reveals himself to be something of a controlling dick. And then the album just ends, inspired by Chris Ware's Acme Novelty Library 19, as the band says, that hammers down on the themes damn near perfectly. The obsession with an ideal shaped by the narrator's own appetites and not the reality of what she got. And it's a reality that she's very much acutely aware of, that she effectively backed into through her old behavior in the past, and now she's stuck living in the consequences of an action in a marriage perhaps to the wrong person entirely, conforming to the societal norm that she originally gave the middle finger to on songs like Party Beliefs and Ones Who Love You, trying to give her middle finger to that establishment that she ends up being a part of. And with that, the metaphor snaps into very sharp focus with a point of message to our generation, or my generation at least, that ultimately an attitude of detachment and self-absorption and superficial defiance without any heart beneath it will leave us falling into the same suburban discontentment we always scorn, and that the vapid platitudes and shallow societal trappings are concealing something much bleaker and much less satisfying beneath it, which is perfectly framed in the clash between that sunny instrumentation and distinctly frosty lyrics, all things considered. So, you know what, if this album sounds entirely too cerebral for an upbeat summer pop record, okay, yeah, it probably is, but that's the point. And I'll admit I'm entirely reading a little bit too much into this, but you know what, it works, because the self-titled day view by Alves has a lot to say and executes it surprisingly well. It's the sort of music that can be easily enjoyed on two levels. The upbeat, breezy, indie pop rock that's perfect for beaches and campouts, and as a pointed examination and critique of the laid-back attitudes and shallowness lurking beneath that. In other words, it's a record that I really ended up liking a lot more than I thought I would, and it's getting a strong 8 out of 10 from me. Indie rock is seldom this smart, and layered, especially when it's masked as something so twee and shallow. So you guys should all check out the self-titled debut from Alves. You will not regret it. I promise you that. <sighs> so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Um, if there's any albums coming out or that came out in 2014 that I haven't covered yet, you want me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to give them a listen. I'm getting a little bit desperate here. Other, if there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation along the way, I'm also all ears. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.